Lucky Yard loves when we learn how to make something. And we are very excited because we're here with our friend Lisa Deemer. And Lisa has Main Street Makery. Um, it's a brand new business for you actually, right Lisa? Yes it is. Um, we just opened up in June. And um, even though it's brand new, I've been here for 13 yes. years. <laughs> We're taking classes here now, which yes. is so much fun. Yes, we are a kitchen arts studio. We can do anything that happens in the kitchen. Things that your grandparents did, your great-grandparents did. It. We turn them into modern classes so you can learn old-fashioned techniques in a really new, fresh way. I love it. And today, we are making pretzels. Yes. How fun is that? So we're going to start making our dough, but before we do the dough, we have to make our yeast. So we're going to be taking one tablespoon, which is the big blue one. Mm -hmm. Jackie, take a tablespoon of sugar and throw it into your water. What we're doing is we're actually giving the water food because we're gonna add our yeast, and the yeast is going to start to feed off of the sugar water. Now you're going to do two and a half teaspoons of yeast, which is Two right here. Two and a half here. teaspoons, yes. okay. People don't realize that yeast is actually a living thing. So when you add it to warm water with a little sugar in it, it actually feeds and starts to grow. Take your whisk mm -hmm. and just whisk it up a little bit just so that it can get a nice, even mix. And we're gonna let that sit for about five minutes or so while we're mixing up our flour. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our bowl, you have a bowl right yes, over there. Yes, do. Three and a half cups of flour, okay? Right. So do you remember how to do that, right? You always wanna level off your flour? Oh yeah. Okay, so now we're going to add a teaspoon and a half of salt. So we don't add the salt to the yeast water because the salt actually slows the yeast growth down. Oh, okay. So then you're going to take your spatula and just toss that around. Okay. All right, what's next, Lisa? All right, Jackie, what we're going to do is make a little well in the middle of our bowl with your spatula okay. on the side. And we're going to throw one tablespoon of butter. Now, you could use oil at this stage because it's just to soften okay. the dough, but butter has a much better flavor. You know, oh, everything's yes, better with does. butter. <laughs> <laughs> now, take your yeast. Now, do you see how high it's going to head on yes. like a beer? So we're going to pour that right inside that well. So before we get down and dirty, we're going to take our spatula and just incorporate all of that flour. Okay. And then once it's almost gathered, you can just pick the whole ball up and throw it onto your tray because we're going to need it now. So how we need, just plop the ball down, give mm -hmm. it a press, right, and then fold it, and then turn it, and press it with your heel. Fold it, turn it, press it with your heel. If your dough feels a little sticky, we have plenty of flour. Okay. Never want to add too much flour, okay, because the more flour you add, the tougher the dough gets. Oh, okay. And then we're going to let it rest for five minutes, okay? And then we're going to start shaping pretzels. All right. So we're gonna take just a little bit of flour, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to cut this into eight equal portions, roughly equal, doesn't really matter. Now you can shape these however you want. Okay. You can shape them like a traditional pretzel. Mm -hmm. You can roll it out into a long strip, and then we can wrap hot dogs, oh, or cheeses, or chocolate. And the sky's the limit. So we're gonna take a chunk of dough, all right, and I'm gonna roll it. I'm gonna to try to get it out to about 20 inches in length. If your dough starts shrinking on you really like severely, like it's not letting you stretch it anymore, yeah. that means you played with it too much and it doesn't want you to play with it anymore. So you set it aside for a minute or two right. and then the gluten will let you wow. start stretching Love it again. That. So I'm gonna show you on this one how to make the pretzel shape. All right. And then you can do another. So what happens is you take the dough, you crisscross it up like that. Right. So it looks like one of those ribbons. Right. But then you gotta crisscross it one more time. And that forms the knot, and then you bend it over and pinch it down ah. here. So there oh, you go. there it is. There it is. Oh, that's okay. awesome. And then you just plop it right back on that tray. Okay. And then start with another one. All right, give it another try. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you too while you're rolling that out. I'm going to show you how to wrap a hot dog. Oh, okay, good. So you just take a hot dog. It does not have to be cooked because hot dogs are pre-cooked anyway, just so you know. We're going to be boiling these pretzels plus baking them so it will get cooked through. Okay. The most important thing to do is Put the piece of dough over the end and hold it like that. Because I want to make sure I get that really sealed in. And now I'm going to roll it this way. Once you do that part, you can just go right down the whole hot dog. When you get to the end, you want to make sure it's sealed. That's really important. So I'm going to pinch all of these seams tight. Because if I don't, then when I put it in the boiling water, 
it's going to open up. So for the cheese, I would do it the same as the hot dog, but if I was gonna do chocolate, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. I'm gonna just take my dough, mm -hmm. stretch it a little bit, and then I'm gonna put the chocolate in there, and then I'm gonna fold it over and make sure I seal it really well this way. I don't do the roll like the hot dog because I don't want any chance of this chocolate to leak out. One of the most important tools to have at this stage is a tongue. All right. Because you're gonna be sticking these pretzels in here oh, for just 10 water. seconds, mm -hmm. you gotta flip them around a little bit, and then you gotta take them back out. So the water has to be boiling because you want it to happen fast. All right, just 10 oh, seconds. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. okay, so now's the fun part. This is when we get to fancy up our pretzels and our toppers. Yeah. So we're gonna take each one of these pretzels, mm -hmm. line them and put them right onto this pan. But before we do that, we're gonna take a little bit of, this happens to be farina, but you can also use semolina or corn okay. meal. And then that's gonna just add a little air underneath the pretzel so it doesn't get soggy down there. Ah. So you can brush them with butter. Mm -hmm. And here we have a little bit of right. egg wash. So if you're gonna use the egg wash, you're just gonna spritz it, get the whole top wet, and then you can add your salt or bagel, everything, or poppy seed, whatever you would like. Okay. So we're gonna pop these in a hot oven, 400 degrees, for about 10 to 12 minutes. All right, okay? great. Let's go. All right. When we come back, Lisa shows us how to make our own mustard for dipping our pretzels. All right, Jackie, your pretzels look gorgeous. I love, look at this, it's amazing. That? They're professional. I'm very proud. They'll be hiding <laughs> it in some pretzel shop somewhere yes. soon, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. But what goes with pretzels is mustard, yeah. and a lot of people don't realize you can make mustard at home. I did not know that. Yes, we're gonna give you some labor now. I'm gonna okay. give you a mortar and pestle. So I'm giving you some light mustard seed All right. and some dark mustard seed, okay? okay? And so now you're gonna crunch those down. So the good thing about mustard um, when you're making it homemade is you can totally control the thickness and the crunchiness oh. and whatever you like in your mustard. So there's the super simple, this is the famous mustard that you put on hot dogs and things, super smooth. Yes. Then you would just simply use mustard powder. You wouldn't oh, use oh, the seed. Oh, okay. But if you want to do the more fancier mustards, then you're going to want some seeds in there because it's all about texture. So if you wanted to really get those ground, mm -hmm. it would take you a long time. You'd have to be angry when you start yes. so you can really it's pound nice it away. It's a nice workout. It is. It's a really nice workout. <laughs> but they have this wonderful machine now that literally grinds them in no oh, time. Oh, so nice. Can, you can pour all that in here. Okay. And we're going to pulverize it. So now you have to watch out because this is designed to grind coffee, coffee. beans, mm -hmm. so it's going to really pulverize it, so you don't want to end up with powder. Oh. So you're just gonna go a little bit and take a peek. Oh, so nice. So you see how ground that is already? Yes, looks good. Yes, and now we're gonna add some other stuff. So this, if we would just use this straight up, it would really be crunchy on your teeth. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna add a little bit more mustard Powder. powder. We're going to add a little turmeric to add some color, and we're going to add some salt. Salt's kind of important for this recipe, believe it or not. If it's not in there, it's just going to taste like ground up seeds, you know? No kidding. So it enhances, it brings out the flavor? It brings out the flavor. Now we're going to add some vinegar. So the vinegar, the clear white vinegar, adds a nice bite. If you want a milder mustard, then you want to go with an apple cider vinegar, or wine vinegar, or any other kind of vinegar that's not as strong. Right. Going to add a little bit of honey, okay? And then, this is what we do now. We add the beer to give it a little liquidness. So I'm going to use up to a quarter of a cup here. All right. So the whole thing is, is that you do want to do this a day or two before you're serving it, because it does have to marry yeah, together. Yeah. All the flavors have to marry. Your pretzels look phenomenal, and Perfect. now we're gonna dip them into things. The mustard is here. We also have cinnamon sugar, so pretzels can go either way, sweet or savory. True. Very you know? true. So, okay, let's grab a piece and All see what right. we got. I'm gonna go for the mustard. Go for it. Let's try this baby. Yeah, a little bit. Wow, that's good. Isn't that something? Mm. Mm. Now for dessert. It's now we'll perfect. dip it in a little bit of butter, a little bit of sugar. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> These pretzels are awesome. Isn't that great? They're so fluffy inside. Mm-hmm. Why don't you tell everyone where you're located and more information in case they want to take a class? Sure. We are located downtown Stroudsburg, mm -hmm. 733 Main Street, and we have a full array of classes on our website, MainStreetMakery.com, or visit our Facebook page. It has all the information you need to know. Terrific. Lisa, thank you so much for showing us how to make these pretzels. Thank you for coming so down. Good. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. <laughs> okay.